So I'm going to start part two of the video on the Forst and Andrews organ in Ancaster Church, which is my local church, one of the churches I'm organist at. And um, I'm doing that because I'm going to, there's been so many queries on the part one, and it was such an editing error, it, it should have gone on for about another five minutes, and it stopped abruptly, and this video is going to take that into consideration. And we'll also move on to taking those pantographs off and cleaning them up and repainting them. So we're in Ancaster Church. It was started um, uh, just over a thousand years ago. And you can see, as so we move over towards the organ there, we've got these Norman arches. And the two are slightly different, as you can well imagine, all those years ago. This church is built on the site of the Roman temple just to make it even more interesting. So there's a small two manual pipe organ here, and I think it's a Richardson of Manchester, four stops on each. And the reason I'm telling you this, it still has a hand pump on it. So I'm gonna show you the hand pump and we'll see if we can see the underneath of it to better explain those feeders that are removed from our Forst and Andrews one. So poking out at the side of the organ is a handle. And if I can just get around a few chairs and things. It's been locked into position so that it doesn't go up and down. Okay, that's fair enough. I'm not going to interfere with that. But on the downstroke, it operates one feeder, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. And on the upstroke, it operates the other. So on the side of the organ, trying not to get the video light into shot, uh, we've actually got the pedal pipes, one half of them, which go up the side of the case. It's quite a compact organ. Anyway, we'll go around the other side and see if we can just look under the bellows. So this is the top of the bellows. So if I can, I've had to go handheld. There's not much space. Certainly not for somebody my size. You'll see, hopefully, that there are weights on top of this bellows to give it the pressure. And then underneath, you'll see the hinge. If we can just get lower, you see that white leather there between there and the floor is the hinge of one of the feeders, the very feeders which have been removed from the Forsh and Andrews organ. So it's still got those underneath. So if those non-return valves are a bit dodgy, you've got a wind loss because of it. So if this came up for overhaul, it'd probably be an ideal thing to actually remove them. So I don't think we can see the other side of it. I will have a go just before um, just writing off the idea. Then here is the electric blower, which is a BOB, British Organ Blowers of Derby and they're still in existence, still build blowers, it's now Bob Stevenson. And there's a, con there's a trunking goes out of there into that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put the wind on and when we'll, what I'll try and do is to put the camcorder down in such a way You can see this work. So that's a cutoff valve. So the air comes in from the blower, but of course, if you just put the air in forever, the bellows will go up and up and up and up. And I showed you they have emergency dump valves underneath, but you don't want to do that. You want to cut the input off. So what we have, that cord lifts up a sluice gate and you'll see this happen. As the bellows rise, one end of that is tied to the top of the bellows. So you'll see that rise, and you'll see as the bellows rises, this will come down and cut off the air supply. So I'm gonna put on the blower now. So the bellows is risen. 
and it's cut the air supply off, we can actually see that, like the one we're going to work on, it's a double rise bellows. So you've got the upper one, the floating frame, and the lower one. You can see how that bounces around so easily with the three inch water gauge of pressure that it'll be set to. So we'll just have a final look as to whether we can see the feeders underneath. Okay, so there's a photo, and there's me all over the... I think we're gonna close the door. Does that help? Not think I need to stand there so that you're on uh, um, the fluorescent lights in here rather than uh, the natural light flooding in. Uh, so that's the organ um, as on the day we were to take it out of the chapel. You'll see that the as we take the organ out, the structure behind it with the plaster and, and that, there was a real problem with damp and it did need to come out. Don't get me wrong, the organ needs to come out so the building could be sorted. But the organ should have gone back in. But there you go, it didn't. We bought it. Uh, I think they've gone down the wrong avenue, but that's my opinion. So, um, this is this chapel it came out of, it was put in in 1914, and originally, it's this, so this is its third installation. Oh, 1970. So here on the National Pipe Organ Register, all pipe organs in the UK are registered, and that's uh, part of Cambridge University. And so in this particular building, it went in in 1917, so it's Forster Andrews organ from Louth Congregational Church, DO4021 was installed here when the congregations merged. And there, then there was a previous organ in, in this building which went somewhere else. Then 1950 it got an electric blower, 1965 it got a new pedal board which is a shame because it would have been, um, it would have been 25 notes and it's been fitted with the post-1914 standard of a 30 note pedal board. Now in the UK, uh, pipe organs, the standard is 30 notes. In America it's 32 notes, but in the UK it's 30 notes. And that is a shame. I mean, it had a, a basic clean and overhaul um, by uh, Chris Hind uh, in 1985. So they're supposed to be done about every 25 years. So we bought this in 2010. So it was absolutely due for its next overhaul. So they all fits together. And he did say to me when we bought it, uh, Chris said, well, um, it, it's going to head, head, for, head for the bellows to be done. And of course he's right. And then after storage with mouse eatings, uh, it's, it's complex, it's time consuming, and the, the leather costs. So the specification, um, it's six on the grate. The bottom keyboard is called the grate. Theoretically, the bigger pipes, which are noisier, <laughs> are on the bottom keyboard called the grate. And traditionally, they're controlled from the stops on the right. The swell keyboard, it can swell out. It has those shutters on the front. We've talked about the Venetian blinds. And there's a pedal in the center there, like you'd get on an electronic organ, changes the volume of that by opening and closing the shutters. Now, here comes another conundrum. That isn't how it should be. It should be a ratchet pedal on the right. Do I reverse that? I don't know. It's a difficult thing. Do I reverse the pedal board back to 25? No, no, I don't. I, I think we've got to live with the fact that in um, between 1917, is it when it went in? Uh, between 1917 and 1965, it got some modifications. And one of the modifications that is blatantly wrong, the, what happens is the, the, the stops, the, the speaking length of the organ pipes, Piano pitch, the same pitch where middle C would play a particular frequency, is eight foot pitch on a pipe organ. So four foot pitch is half the size and it's an octave higher. So if you held middle C on an eight foot stop, and you, which would be there, I'll just get that in camera so I can, you can actually see what I'm doing. Middle C would be there. So if I held treble C on a eight foot stop, that would be the same pitch as that on a four foot stop. So what it refers to is the bottom note, when it's bottom C, so we're in an in organ building, we have middle, treble, top, tenor, and bass. So the bass bottom C, 
that pipe would be eight feet speaking length on an eight foot stop. On a 16 foot stop, like you have on the pedals, it would be an octave lower, so a deeper note, so it would be lower than we have keys for, that would be 16 foot. Four foot would be an octave higher, and two foot an octave higher still. Some organs have mixtures, and they play different notes entirely, so you effectively get a chord on each note you play. This organ doesn't go down that avenue. So, um, on the right here, the, the traditional way of doing this is your lowest footages, in this case eight, and we can see the specification. So the bottom stop, well the very bottom stop is probably the pedal 16 foot board on. But the bottom stop, let's count, this should be one, two, three, ah, one split into two, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, that's right, so that's going to be the 16 foot pedal. So that bottom one's going to be the open diapason 8. The next one is a bell gamba. Now I don't think I've come across one of those. They're beautiful pipes. This was an expensively built organ, and I say it's in history books because it was the first one Forster Andrews did with uh, what they called large scale pipe work. Um, so then we've got stop diapason bass and stop diapason treble. It is split. On some organs, that split is done automatically. They hadn't done that on this organ in, at that time. That conica we have finished in our workshop, which is 1877, two years later, does that automatically. Um, so then, as we move up, uh, we have principal four foot, which is the same kind of sound as the open diapason, but an octave higher. And then we have a four foot flute, which is going to be there. And that's the same as a stop diapason, but an octave higher. Then at the top, they've got a Dulciana, which is a stringy eight foot. That's wrong. That shouldn't be there. That's clearly gone on, probably 1917. That should be a 15th two foot. So we're going to have to take that off. That means we're going to have to have made 56. It's a 56 note keyboard. We're going to have to have 56 pipes made, brand new. The pipe makers in Leeds will make them to exactly the right scale pattern for this type of organ of this make and of this um, era, and you won't be able to tell the difference to how it should be. So what the, it, it, I, I think organs went through the kind of post-Victorian period of being dull, and, dull as dishwater, and anything which was slightly bright and cheerful, they would have removed, and a two-foot stop is going to be pretty bright and cheerful when you consider that it's going to be two octaves higher than an eight-foot set of pipes. So that's one of the expensive modifications. That'd be about two and a half thousand quid to have made. So that's what they're going to do. I won't discuss the swell. We're discussing the bottom keyboard. So if I show, let's see what we've got. So as, as the organ came out, you can see the state of the building behind. And these levers operate the stops, which have sliders. There's slips of wood with holes in which have 56 holes for the 56 pipes. The soundboard is, has the, what we call pallets, which are the air valves, which are activated by the keys through a mechanical action, totally mechanical. If I show you that picture, you'll see some of the mechanical action. That's Mr. Chippy 15 years ago and Mark ZX2 um, helping him um, take out some of the pedal couplers. So when you press the pedal notes, the 30 uh, notes on the floor, you'll have the ability on most pipe organs to be able to play one or both of the keyboards from the pedals through a coupler accessory. And that's what that is. Totally mechanically done. They're just taking the um, wires off so we can remove that part of the mechanism. And then you're left with the building frame. We've taken off the great soundboard, which is where the pipes with the bottom keyboard live. And we're left with the swell soundboard. And that's where that bit of mechanical action goes to, which will all get rebuilt. So you can see it's on a building frame. But what the reason I'm showing these pictures is, hey presto, there's the bellows the right way up with its weights on. It has cast iron weights um, and they produce the exact pressure the organ requires. I'll have to look at my notes, but the standard on most pipe organs uh, of this kind of size is about a three inch water gauge. And that's how much a u-tube or a bordon tube with water in it how far it shifts when you apply pressure so that's where we are 
And for those of you who want to see Mr. Chippy, you've now seen him from 15 years ago when he was beardless and slimmer and and all that. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to paint this bottom of the pillows again. And then when time permits, perhaps next week, there's no grass growing around this. Remember the building still being erected. Um, we're going to turn it the other way around. We're going to strip the leather off and we're going to start doing that re-leathering, which will be somewhere around £680 in leather, plus a lot of time. And it's applied with animal glue uh, so that it can be steamed off in the future. Um, you should get at least 75 years life out of a bellows uh, leather. And this could have been patched, but we're not doing that. So there we go. So that's the console when it's finished. So there will be a stop alteration to back to how it should have been. And we've also got to come to the conclusion because there's absolutely no way on this earth that this organ should be white. And we've got to check. We'll do some scraping away at the corner um, somewhere um, what colour is underneath. Now, I've got a, she a super problem. I've got a sneaking suspicion that this organ is what you'd call duck egg green and it's supposed to be an eggshell finish. That's brought eggs in twice, but that is the case. I think that's the color it should be. But I may be wrong. It may be that it should be French polished wood. We've got to check that. And uh, we're certainly not going to be white because it, that looks like it's come out of a Las Vegas uh, um, drive-through marriage uh, uh, place, to be honest. So there we are. That's where we are with the 1865 organ. This is my main job, restoring pipe organs. As you know, I worked as a church organist. I did a seven year apprenticeship in church pipe organ restoration as a church organ builder. And this is what I have done. And the electronics career is parallel. So uh, there was a time when we had a shop and I employed people to do things and uh, that isn't the case now. Ask people to come in as and when. So this is our organ going in that new building and nothing to do with electronics, no electronics, totally mechanical. I will just say the pedal system on this is pneumatic, works on air pressure. Normally when we come up against that, we would convert it to electric action. Uh, with it being a historical instrument, I want to keep modifications to a minimum. And if it's usable, and I don't think there was a problem when it came out, um, if it's usable and it's rebuildable, we will keep it pneumatic on this occasion. So part two, we're in, uh, or is this part three? Oh, it's part two still. We're in the organ workshop and we are going to take these pantographs off. Now what we've done, move the camcorder around, taken that one off, I've labelled it and I've put the word bottom. Because remember this is upside down. We've done exactly the same at the other side. Labelled as bottom. So now just screw to the floating frame and everything goes in this very useful box which will also be labelled. Then we're going to turn it up, this, up the correct way around and start taking the leather off. Right, so now what we've done is to put the thing with wedges. These we managed to cut six inch wedges, or was it five inch wedges? I think it was five inch wedges, yeah. So this has now opened it up, and what you can see is the bottom section, because we've now turned it the correct way up. The painted bit we've done is under there, the floating frame, and the other. And you'll notice that this is convex and this is concave. So they both work equally. That's how it's done. So what we'll now do, we're waiting for the steamer to, uh, I've just got one of those wallpaper steamer things down there. Uh, we're just waiting for that to uh, warm up and then we will start steaming the leather off. But I'm gonna be cutting some of these out to use as patterns rather than just have to faff around and work it out. You can see where there's been some patches done to tidy it over in the past. So there in the corner, we have got the ribs. So there's eight sets of ribs and they're now either cut away or steamed away and they will get re-leathered and you'll see that happening. So now the bellows is in three sections. So without the ribs, we've got the bottom section, section which is referred to as the well. And this is quite shallow for an organ. 
And inside here, you'll see these flaps of leather, which are those non-return valves. And so they, they tend to have a tendency to curl up at the edges. And that's why we bored it all over, because it do, does indeed curl up at the edge. So although there's air pressure to try and close those, it's not ideal. So they're boarded over, and we, we're going to obviously clean the inside out, all the dead bats or whatever's inside. And then we've got the top section, which is now clear. And we've got the floating frame, which is now clear. So it's still very heavy. Because all we've done is remove the ribs. So I'm going to get my assistant to go around the other side. And what we're going to do is we're going to move, just move that chisel off, please. We're going to put this now on the on the floor. Okay, just this section. Why ain't it coming off? I have no idea. There we go. So there is our floating frame. So we'll now put that carefully down without knocking the fluorescence. So you'll see we've got those emergency escape valves which open to atmosphere. There are two of those. And you can see all those non-return flaps. We found a bungee cord and the whole part. No, that's because the bench is underneath. <laughs> right, well obviously my colleague today is not with it. This is Andy today, it's not Mr Chippy. We call him Andy Six Pack because he's got more than uh, than I have. I've got a one pack because it's a fat tummy. So there we are, that's where we're going to leave it and we're going to be stripping all the remnants of leather off, we're going to be cleaning the inside and so on and that's where it'll end. So thanks for watching part two of the restoration of the Porsche Andrews organ from 1865.